Well, hello. My name is Paul Olson, and this, well, you know who this is. Mickey and I are making an appeal to every one of you who love Star Trek, but especially those of you who have a soft spot in your heart for the beautiful and stunning Starship Enterprise from the first Star Trek movie. I need your help. And here she is. Beautiful. The man who designed the Enterprise, the man who built it, and myself who painted it, want to restore the model. Trouble is, the model's gone missing. This is where I need your help. Here's the whole story. Let me introduce you to Richard Taylor, the phenomenally talented artist, art director, and designer, and effects director probably the top effects director in Hollywood, who designed the Starship Enterprise in collaboration with um, Gene Roddenberry, who created the series. Well, they were always fighting us, but in any case, there was a committee of about eight to ten people sitting there to look at every design, and then this free-for-all discussion would begin. Uh, and when they'd have astronauts who would say, well, Mr. Taylor's design is exactly correct there, and Roddenberry would say, but that's not the way it's going to be in the future. Yeah. Uh, and, I know. And I, would, and I would bring in footage that MIT had done, try and emulate what something would look like when it close to the, approach to the speed of light. And I'd show that. And he'd say, no, that's not what happens when things go to the speed of light. I'd say, well, at MIT they're kind of thinking that. You know, it's, no, in the future what's going to happen? Everybody go, okay. So he would tell astronauts, no, that's not the way it's going to be in the future. Yeah. And so this committee would vote, and I've learned after a while to whatever I really wanted to be the design, I would bury it about eight deep. <laughs> yeah. And they'd say, no, I think good. And, they'd, and then they'd argue over that. And then they'd argue, and finally they'd say, oh, that's good. <laughs> and I'd say, really? Oh, okay, well, we'll go with that. <laughs> I love Richard. <laughs> I love Richard's uh, impersonation of Gene. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's the man who designed the Enterprise. And now, here is the man who built it, Jim Dow. Jim Dow is the best model maker on the planet. Before it was coated, <clears throat> and then the diacom is, is a very dark blue translucent material. It's a lacquer-based material. That was sprayed on over the aluminum. So. Some of the iridescence of the aluminum came through the blue of the dicom. So, in, in lighting that, <clears throat> that probably is why why you see some other colors uh, ah, appearing. Very there. interesting. Yeah. Jim ran the model shop called Magicam right in the working part of Hollywood. And Jim is the person who hired me to paint the Enterprise. Uh, Jim also hired Mark Stetson, and you can see behind Jim, this, this interview was filmed at Mark's house, you can see Mark's Oscar and his two BAFTAs, and he's got a room full of awards and trophies. I mean, the man is prodigious. Um, he works all over the world. He'll call me up and say, Paul, I'm in London, let's have dinner, <laughs> just out of the blue. Or I'll write to him, and he said, I, I, "Paul, I, I'm in the middle of a project with Tim Burton, or I'm doing something. I'm I'm in Auckland, New Zealand, or I'm in China, or I, I'm you know I'm at the South Pole." <laughs> anyway, here is marvelous Mark Stetson, known to a very few of his close friends, including me, Markle. Uh, Jim and I might have been talking about this off camera, but my intro to Jim was through. Uh uh, my two of my classmates, uh, Chris Ross and Tom Pock, both of whom Jim hired several months before me. And Chris Ross came back to visit us uh, uh, well, when I was still going to the Art Center, uh, uh, saying, I'm designing intergalactic spaceships for a living. What are you guys doing? <laughs> well, that sounds a little better than toasters and clocks. Because <laughs> I had worked as a, as a model maker for a General Electric company for a year as an apprentice to learn 
the uh, craft of, of, uh, of industrial model making. So I actually was a pretty skilled model maker, but just kind of bored with what I was working on, and generally bored with industrial design office environments. So the ones I worked in were conservative and did a lot of boring work. You know? <laughs> it's just the nature of the business. There's a lot of meat and potatoes in any business. Paramount auctioned off the Enterprise in 2006 at Christie's in New York, and it was purchased by an anonymous buyer. And the thinking is that Paul Allen bought it, but in fact I found out that Paul Allen doesn't have it, and it turns out that Jeff Bezos of Amazon may have it in Seattle at his Blue Origin facility, but I haven't been able to make any progress there. So if you or someone you know, or someone you know you know, who knows someone, you know, six degrees of separation, um, knows where the enterprise is, or knows Jeff Bezos, or has an inn at Blue Origin, or has seen the model there, or something. And our plan is to completely restore the model. So that means, that, uh, because the model has been absolutely uh, trashed. It's the only word for it. The, uh, for the second movie, the uh, paint job was dulled down, and then it was resprayed once bad, uh, really badly, because they could fix everything in the mix and with CGI that was coming along by the third movie. Um, and it's been chipped and scratched, and oh, it's, I mean, it just, it's embarrassing and should never be seen in public. Um, so our plan is to restore the model. We have a facility in Hollywood to, to do it, and it'll take a year to restore it because Jim will have to completely disassemble the model, and then um, we have new electrics designed for it and have those put in, reassemble the model, and then get it ready for paint, and then it's going to take me six months to maybe even eight months to paint all the detail um, on the model to finish her off. And then Richard, whilst this is going on, Richard will film a, docu a feature documentary of the whole process and the whole story, how we found the Enterprise, maybe because, you know, maybe you'll be in it because you helped me find it. Um, and then the whole process of restoring her and getting her ready to star in her own film, which I've written. Um, and uh, that takes place in the 24th century, and it follows 30 years on from the fourth movie, The Voyage Home. So that's the plan, and, but, you know, <laughs> we need to find the Enterprise. As we were the people who created her, we are the only people on the planet qualified to restore her. Otherwise, she should be left alone. But we have everything lined up, and we want to do it. Now, no one, especially the person who owns the Enterprise, has ever seen her as she was when she left my hands and we shot her for the first movie. Uh, the model was stunning. Um, when we were led on to the shooting stage, after I'd finished painting her and everything, we were locked out of the stage for three days while the lighting guys had their way with her. And then we were brought in to a blackened stage and she was lit up in the dry dock. And it was breathtaking. I couldn't believe how gorgeous she was. And now she's just a, she's a sliver of her former self. And, and it's such a pity when she could be absolutely beautiful again and star in her own movie. Now, this isn't just a little lightweight piece of fluff um, that I've written. This took me six months, and I know how to write a screenplay. And when presented to the, uh, when I approached the first agent when I was in LA uh, to have him read the screenplay, he got it right away and he said, Paul, it's great. And oddly enough, the agent was good friends with Gene Roddenberry. So, you know, circles within circles. Now, if you've gotten this far, um, you might be interested in a book I've written, Creating the Enterprise, and if you go to the, um, to the website down at the bottom 
of the uh, of your screen here, then uh, you can have a look at at the book. It's available as an ebook as well for $9.99, and uh, all proceeds from the book go to help me get back over to the West Coast and you know rent a car and accommodation and expenses and everything. Plus, uh, let's see, the round trip on the airplane is around a thousand bucks. So, um, and that helps me move this process forward. Um, and uh, what else is there? Well, um, I'd like to thank you for seeing me this far. And here's a little bit about how I got involved with painting the Enterprise. I was friends very briefly with a, a, a guy named Ed Scarisbrick and another uh, who was an illustrator, English guy, and Peter Lloyd who was also English. And Peter knew Ed and so the three of us started hanging around together because I had lived in England previously. And um, Ed shared a studio with a guy named Charlie White. And Charlie White went to school with Jim Dow. And when the model was ready to be painted, Jim called Charlie to see if he knew anyone who might be good enough with an airbrush to paint the Starship Enterprise. And so here's the story. But if you want to get in touch with me, my email is at the bottom of the page of the web page. And thank you for watching. So I called Charlie. And Charlie says, "Well, I can't, I can't put the time into it, but I've got somebody else here. I, I don't know if he handed the phone to you or if you no. He, back. he handed the phone to Ed because they, okay. they, they were in the same room and they faced yeah. each other, you know. Yeah. And, um, and then, he said to Ed, he says, "Don't you, don't, don't you, you have a friend of yours who's looking for work who's yeah. pretty good with an airbrush?" And then, Ed said, "I'll, you know, he got your details and yeah. he gave me a call and." So I'm at my studio in the La Bamba house up on the top of the Silver Lake Hills and picked up the phone and he goes, Paul, it's Ed, how would you like to paint a Starship Enterprise? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, give me a minute, will you? <laughs> so, um, and that was it. And then so you came out with I, some, I, I uh, came down to see you and yeah. I showed you my stuff and you yeah. said, you know, I think you'll do. And we, Jim led me down the hallway and... We just built a... Uh, a spray booth. Yeah, spray yeah. And it was just down the hallway on the right before you walked into the main model room. Um, and <clears throat> there she was, you know, as I said, with her wings spread, waiting for me yeah. to have my way with her. <laughs> yeah. What are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Looking very much like she looked in the dry dock. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. the right. and Jim, Jim mm -hmm. said, um, uh, I, and I mean, it was. It was a heart-stopping moment, you know. I, I mean, here I was with the Enterprise, and it was up to me. And I, you know, I, I had to take a big gulp. And I remember thinking, you know, I, Jesus, I'm really in deep here. And um, and then Jim said that um, you did, hadn't you restored or repainted was a 1935 Ford? Yeah, yeah. And you used pearlescent yeah, colors. Right. Yeah, and that's. And then you suggested. Right. I do that. And then I we start playing with, with pearls. That's right, yeah. And um well, and then it was that stuff was all made by Crescent, wasn't it? Yeah, Crescent, yeah, Crescent. And they made yeah. four different colors. Well they made plus they made pigments though, they had incredible iridescent pigments yeah. of all kinds and yeah, that stuff was incredible. Yeah, well, I'm sure they still make it. Right? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Broad uh, range of color now. And they were I remember for a four ounce bottle. They were forty-eight bucks each, yeah, which was a lot of money. Yeah, and I well, because they were actually made, they were actually made with ground pearl. Yeah, yeah. so they're iridescent. Yeah, you know the thing that people see when you look at a a, a seashell.